Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship. This week, we're talking about the do's and don'ts of setting up parallel processing on an X32. Hey, 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 what do you say? Yes, it's that time again. It's Tech Tuesday. So first off, what is parallel processing? For the rest of this video, I'm gonna to refer to it as parallel compression, just because that's the most popular form, but it's a way of taking a signal or group of signals, and you're gonna split it up into two different groups um, that are both headed to the, the main left right. One of them will be heavily compressed, um, and one of them will have little to no compression, and when they come together, it gives you that kind of rock drum big sound. Um, that a lot of people are really into. Uh, this has become a lot more popular lately with the X32 and other consoles being uh, more and more affordable uh, so that now you can actually do this kind of thing, whereas before it was a little bit more difficult. Um, this is kind of a studio trick that has finally made its way to the live world. Um, and the thing that you have to understand is that there are certain ways that you can and cannot or really should not do this on the X32 based on the limitations of what it has. So I figured today we'd do a video and show that um, because I've got, there's this one thing you can do that's really easy, even some really good audio engineers that I know um, have made this mistake because it's kind of hard to tell. Um, so that's what I want to talk about today. So let's hop in and take a look at an example. All right, so on here, we've got two groups of drums we're looking at here. Um, so what's happening is I'm playing these in a recording program in the back and through my car, they're playing back through the computer. And the reason why I've broken them up into two groups is because I've got my cymbals, this is my overheads, my hi-hat, my, um, my drum reverb coming back into one group. I'm not going to try and compress these. These are going to be just open all the time. Uh, and then I've got the rest of my drums. This is my kick, snare. Rack Tom and Four Tom. And these are the ones that we're gonna be playing with today. Um, so over here, we're currently looking at our buses one through eight. Um, you don't need eight of them. At most, you'll need four. Um, but what I, I just have them all open so you can see what's going on here. Um, so if we look at this first bus here that's labeled comp, um, you can see, because I've got my effects selected, uh, and we are using the Ultimo compressor here. The Ultimo is a knockoff of the 1176. The 1176 is famous for that kind of rock drum, heavily compressed, slight distortion sound that's pretty cool. Um, and so for this first example, this is to show you what not to do, an easy mistake to make, um, is what is happening is we are sending the, the cymbals and the drums to the left-right mix that we have over here. That's what you guys are hearing. Um, and then we're also sending the drums to this mono compressed group over here, um, which then has the uh, plug-in attached, and then that is finally ending up at the left to right as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you hear uh, the cymbals and, and drums without compression, then I'll let you hear the compressor by itself, and then I want you to listen to, there's a weird thing that's going to happen when we put them together. Um, so... Here are our drums. And then here, this is just the compressed signal that we're listening to right now. This is what's going on up here. All right. Now listen to what happens when I fade this in. Out. So what I want you to hear in there, and I'm going to play it again in case you didn't catch it the first time, not just the compression that we're listening to, we're listening to is a, a funky, uh, I call it like a ping pong sound that's happening, uh, where the snare and the cymbals um, have this weird extra like racquetball ping pong you know, ball bouncing against a wall kind of sound. So listen to that again. Um, as I fade in the compressor, you'll hear that. Out. In. So 
So our information in our high mids is getting funky. The reason why that's happening is because the X32, unlike some of its more expensive competitors, um, does not have a uh, delay compensation feature in there. So what's happening is you've got your one signal that is your, your dry signal going straight to your left to right. You've got your compressed signal that is going through this um, plug-in that's not normally there, getting slightly delayed. And so when they when they come together into your left-right mix, your dry signal is getting there first, and then your wet signal is getting there slightly behind, and it's causing comb filtering. Um, so what we need to do, what we're the point of today's video is to show you um, how to either remove the latency of your dry, uh, your wet signal so they reach it at the same time, or to compensate by adding a slight bit of delay uh, to your dry signal so they hit at the same time. Um, so that's what we're gonna look at today. Option number one, use the stock compressor. Now, this is not as sexy sounding as the 1176 that we have on here, um, but the stock compressor, because of the design of the board, doesn't add any latency, so you're not gonna have that problem. So, to do that, um, we're gonna go to our compress group here, uh, and I'm going to uninsert this, uh, this dual compressor, so I can either do that here if I'm on the app, or if you're on the board, you can go to home, uh, and then where the insert tab is, you can turn that off. You can also find that in the config screen um, if you're on the app, on the on the board itself, excuse me. Um, so there's no longer a compressor attached, uh, a, a rack compressor attached to there. So let's take a listen to that. Um, here is, so we got a compressor, but it's not on right now. And hopefully you can hear on there, we're not getting that weird racquetball sound anymore. Um, so now if I were to throw in this compressor, and again, I'm gonna it for you so you can hear what it sounds like. So here comes just the compression. It actually sounds pretty cool. It's not the same exact vibe as what we had with the 1176, but we're still getting that pumping compressed sound. Um, and here they are all together. So without, with. So you can do that and you're not using up one of your um, uh, effects racks that you don't have a ton to work with. Um, so that's option number one. Option number two, double your fun. So when I say that, you're gonna double up on your number of uh, buses that you're routed to and effects that you're using. What this is gonna do is the idea is if we really wanna have that Ultimo compressor, the 1176 model, we're gonna incur latency, we can't undo that. But what we can do is we can match the amount of latency of the dry signal um, so that they do hit at the same time. So here's how we're gonna do that. First off, I'm gonna take my symbols and my um, drums here. I'm going to go up to the home tab. I'm going to take them out of the left right mix. Uh, some good symbols and drums. If you're on the board and you don't know where to do this, uh, here's a picture. On the X32, next to the screen, below your pan knob, the button that says, I think it says stereo on there. I got a low res image. Yeah, it says stereo bus. Um, you can just deselect that and it'll take those out of that mix. All right, so once those are out of the mix, you can't hear them, um, what we're gonna do is we're doubling up our buses here. So we have our compressed bus like before, um, but we also have an open bus. Uh, and on the open bus, if you take a look at it, if I click on effects, I have routed, so this is a, a dual Ultimo compressor, so not stereo, but dual. So instead of left and right, it's an A and B. So I have, the, uh, the compressor on the open bus as well, but my input, my output settings are set so that there is no compression. So if I put these guys up, you can see on here, nothing's happening on the meters, I'm not getting any compression. But if I look at my compressed bus, you can see it is compressing. Um, so here's our open bus. Here's our compressed bus. We'll drop them down a little bit. Here they are together. All 
Oh. And sorry, the reason why we're hearing that issue is because I forgot to switch over. So if we go to my compressed bus, I need to insert that effect. And I need to take off my other compressor. There we go. All right, so now that's in mono, obviously. So over here, we've got the same exact thing, but in stereo. So here's my open bus in stereo. Here's the compressed bus in stereo. If I drop them both just a little bit and put them together. So this gives you the most options, but it also uses up the most resources. Um, by doing it this way, not only do I have a fader control for my compressed bus, I also have fader control for my open bus. So if you notice, one of the things I like to do is to drop them both just a little bit, because you don't want to trick yourself into thinking it sounds better just because it's louder. So if you're just adding in the compressed bus, um, you're getting more volume as well as more of that tone. Um, and it's easy to think that sounds better when maybe it doesn't. So by doing this, we should be achieving about the same output volume but with just a different tone, different um, uh, perceived volume because of the, uh, the compression that's going on here. So you got that option, you can even EQ it. So if you notice on here, there's a little bit of EQ where we're dipping out some mids and accenting the highs and lows of the compressed group, and you can EQ the open group separately as well. If you wanna apply a little bit of compression on the open group and maybe accent the, high, uh, the attack rather than try and diminish it, um, you can do that. So it gives you the most options doing it this way, but it does take up a lot of resources because we're using, uh, in this case, four buses and two full stereo um, uh, effects rack units just to make this happen. So that brings us to option three. Option three is the least uh, resource uh, hungry unit. In this version, we're not going to use any buses. Uh, we are going to put everything back into our left-right mix. And in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, on individual channels rather than on a group, um, we are going to use the uh, compressor that's built in and use the blend knob. So if you didn't know, this is pretty cool. So if we're looking at our, our drums here, go to Dynamics. Um, looking at it on this app, on the old version of the app, um, there's a mix knob up here uh, if you're on the board, there's over on the bottom right hand button, there's going to be like a one and a two. Um, it just shows you the different screens available to see all the information. So you can use your arrow keys um, to go to the next page and there you'll find the mix knob control. Um, so what we're going to do is the same concept as what we did before. Uh, we'll listen to the drums. I'm going to turn on the compressor. And you can see I've got a... Um, fast attack, fast hold, fast release, a little bit of makeup gain, um, a high ratio, and a low threshold. Um, so before our drums sound like this is just a drum channel. And then with that compressor in there. So we're slamming it again. But then I can take my mix knob, put it like 50%, and then it's blending in the original signal on top. So here it is with the cymbals. So again, before, after. So the really cool thing about doing this is if you want to, obviously we're doing this on a group of drums, um, but if you want to do this on just a snare drum, you can do that and do different levels on everything. You can also set this up to where if your drummer wants to hear that rock drum compression uh, going to his or her ears, um, because we're doing this on input channels, you can set that up if you want to, whereas using it with the buses would involve some tricky routing uh, and waste even more resources to do that. Um, so this is really kind of the best of, of um, 
of your resource options available is doing this. But you do miss out on some of the the grit and the tone of the modeler. Um, so you're just going to have to kind of decide if that's what you want to do. So a quick recap. What you don't want to do is have everything go to the left-right mix and to a bus that is inducing latency because that will cause comb filtering. Um, instead, you can do option one, which is instead of uh, using that uh, modeler plugin, you can use just your stock compressor. Uh, option two, if you really want to have that modeler in there, you need to double your fun. You need to send to two buses or groups of buses, and you need to have two plugins, both inducing the same amount of latency so that, again, they reach at the same time. Or option three is to uh, use the uh, stock compressor on individual channels with your blend knob to achieve the desired result. So after all that, the question is, well, do I need to use this at my church? Um, and the short answer is no, you don't need to. You may want to, but you don't need to. Um, so how do you decide if you, if you want to do it or not? Um, well, first off, I think you need to look at your available resources. Um, the most common way to do it is using all these buses. Um, so if you happen to have a board that's only doing stuff for front of house, um, I think you should try it and see how you feel. Uh, just make sure you set it up correctly like we're doing in this video. Uh, if not, then maybe play around with using the, the individual channels and see uh, how that works out for you. Um, two, do you have a volunteer involved? Is this going to be too confusing for them? Um, you can kind of set it and forget it and leave it in the background. But again, it's, it's important for everybody to know how everything's working on the board. Um, so I think probably the best way to try it if you're brand new to this and you're trying to figure out what's going on with the sound. We didn't spend a lot of time um, explaining what I did as far as the actual compression. We'll do that in a later video. Um, the best thing to do is to try it at home uh, using a recording program. Uh, if you don't have resources to do that, don't worry. You can get those at the end of this video. If you're watching on an iPad or a computer, it'll pop up as an available video. If not, you can just search our YouTube page. There's a video called Get More Practice. Uh, and in that video, we have given you a free Dropbox folder with um, a live band playing a song at a summer camp. There's a full drum kit in there. Uh, also, we've given you links to, I think it's three different recording programs uh, that are free um, that will, in one way or another, get you the ability to do what we're doing here. Uh, so you can try it at home and see uh, what it sounds like before you try to implement it at your church. Um, so take a look at those things. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you're doing anything different that's working really well for you. Uh, and have fun. Until next time, have a great week. Again, this is Chad from Ascension Worship. I hope this has been helpful for you and your team. Come back here every Tuesday for new information.